sharing conversations. It's what we do on Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Lois Smith. Good morning. Well, thank you. Problem is, there's been trouble hearing on the telephone, but I'm hearing you perfectly fine, thank goodness. I, I, I love it when the universe comes together like that then. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, got to tell you, Mac and Rita, it, this is one of those movies where I wish I was on the set because please tell me that they they just set up the cameras and let you girls just have a great time because I feel realism in this movie. Again, it was fun. It, oh, I'm glad you felt that way. It, now, making it that much fun, is, is, is that your live stage actress coming out in you? Because, I mean, there, there, there's, there's such a sense of, I, I, here's my space, this is, this is where I'm going to grow with my character. And, it, and it's like, you, we're just sucked right into it like I was watching a live performance. Oh boy, that sounds that sounds good. I'm I'm glad. <laughs> you're gonna go. <laughs> you're gonna go with that one, huh? <laughs> I am going to go with that one, right? <laughs> this is the kind of movie that a lot of people are going to find not only enjoyable, but they're gonna they're going to rate it in their personal lives because you you deal with a subject here where where somebody is looking at their life uh, through older eyes. I was that child that sat in that bathroom in Billings, Montana, always wanted to know who am I going to be when I become an old man. Uh-huh. Wow, this is a movie for you then. Yes. <laughs> that's why I'm touched by it because you, you know it's taken this long for for me to find somebody else that's speaking that language that I had as a kid. Yes, that's wonderful. No, I do think this is it's so much fun, and I think it's going to touch people on that very subject about about what age are we and what do we think about it. Yeah. I love getting older. I, I really do. I mean, that's, that's, I, I turned 60 this year and people are going, oh my God, you're 60. What are you talking about? I'm celebrating. <laughs> well, I'm 91. Congratulations. That is, and and Thank don't, you. don't you love the way that the imagination is still very vivid and very much wanting to go out and play? Oh, yes, that part is wonderful. <laughs> but I do have a lot of trouble remembering names and titles. Yeah, as soon as I try to say a title, I forget it. Yep. That's, that's, that's something that didn't happen earlier, but uh, it's not so bad. Yeah, that, that happens to me. What I do is everybody becomes dude and yo. Yo, yo, come here, yo. Oh, right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Being on yeah. being on that stage, what was it like for you in in the way that because I mean you traveled from L.A. to New York. I mean that's two completely different styles of a live audience. I'm always inspired by those that who are on that live stage. Are you thinking about a particular play? I'm thinking about just you in general because I I'm just so inspired by anybody who can set their their personal lives aside and go out there and in, entertain the masses because you 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 give yourself to the people and and I just love that energy source about the creative mind. Well, you know what? It's it I I I quite agree with you, but I also think what a good stroke of fortune to be able to do that, uh, to, to not only want to do it, but to get the opportunity to do it. Because it, it really, it, it's not as though it doesn't have difficulties and bad moments, but it's really wonderful. Yeah. The the energy that always happens on that stage when, in in the new Elvis Presley movie they they show us a side of him when that curtain comes down and he looks over with exhaustion. Did you ever feel the same way? Where it was like I mean you gave everything into that performance, but once that curtain closed, it was like, oh my god! It was it was just like letting everything go. Well, you know, I guess in a way I do relate to that, but the other part of it is that it. Um, there is a kind of continuing energy that is i i tend i don't want to go straight home and go to bed right uh i i want to have some conversation i want to i want to uh i want to live a little in <laughs> in the afterglow that is, that's that's what I call post production. I mean, it's 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 like there's there's an that's energy right. source that a lot of people don't understand. That when you're in post production, I mean, it's like let's let's go, let's move. I've still got this adrenaline. I'm loving it. Yeah, that's right. Did you feel the same way on the set of the movie Mac and Rita? I mean, because I mean, it's go, moving toward movies is like okay. It seems like you're always on somebody else's time. 
Yes, it's it's not the same in a film, at least in my experience, as as it is a stage performance, which which you start and you play it all the way through, and you're in charge of that performance all the way through, and then when you finish, um, you know, you still have this energy that has been uh, essentially directed a certain way, you know. Uh, it's a little different because filmmaking is so different. You're doing it in little sections. The uh, the technique is different. The system is different. But the the seeds of the performance are basically the same. You're you're finding and shaping your your character, your interaction with your with your fellows. Uh, Maybe not as much with your audience as if you were on the stage in the same space with them, but but the the work of making of making a scene, making a character, is basically essentially the same. Part of what makes that story happen in Mac and Rita is I love the fashion show that you and the girls are doing. I mean that that I mean you, what you're wearing it, it's like a fashion. It's very colorful. It's very it's very like we're in the moment. It's right. It, each character in our the, the the group that I am part of, these four women in their wine club. Each one of us is dressed entirely differently from the others. Yep. And we are each our own our own look and our own self. I thought that was a, a great achievement in the in the uh, the, co- the costuming of it. But I is, love the way the costumes are in is, this film. Isn't that the movie's way of subliminally saying you can still be yourself whatever age you are, just be yourself and just and just be happy? Exactly. It's so much about all the various ages and the <laughs> and all to, all to be enjoyed. Yes. I'm, I, I'm, one of my jobs that I do is I work for the movie promotions companies where we're out there and we're doing research and stuff like that. And so when I see a movie like Mac and Rita, I actually I'll sit back and I'll go, OK, how is this movie going to play out in theaters? Because it does open up on the 12th. I, I, I see the, the age group, the older age group showing up and then I see moms and daughters showing up and then I see it as as the uh, like the millennials going on a date night. I can just see every different level of taking on this movie over the next few months. I think that's exactly right, and I hope I hope that what you're saying is turns out to be true because that's exactly what this movie does. In my opinion, it it reaches it reaches everybody, and and it, it's it's fun. It's a lot of. It's fun. Well, it's also very fun to watch the guys go into the movie kind of reluctantly, you know, the older men and stuff like that. But when they come out, they've got those big grins on their chins. I mean, it, it, they, they know that when, when, when she wants to go see a movie, go see the movie. You're going to have a good time. <laughs> good, yes. <laughs> it's so much fun to see Diane Keaton in this movie. Oh, my goodness. Is she as much fun as what she always portrays on that screen? Yes. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. What, well, what is your secret when it comes to creating the laughter that people connect with and stuff like that? Because, I, I mean, th- there's a sense of realism about you. I've, I've seen the interviews and stuff like that. I love what you bring to those. Oh, thank you. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Um, oh. <laughs> I guess that's that's who I am, huh? Yeah, I ex- so. exactly. I mean, it's, it's and, but that's what that's what's fun about being. You know, the, my wife always told me because her husband is a, is a record producer. She used to say all the time, "Listen, here's the thing: everybody puts on their pants the same way. That just treat every conversation <laughs> that way." And I'm going, "Okay, let's do it." Yes, yes. Do you ever see your life as being the making of a movie? My life is no. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I don't think I think that way. Okay. What what about like through a book? Would you ever share your memoirs and through through the books and stuff like that? Um, I've never had the urge to do that. People have asked me about it. Um, occasionally, I am asked, uh, in you know, to uh, you know, to uh, I I I have not averse to discussing things in my life or. I've never, I've never thought of, of uh, making a no, of making a memoir of it. I guess I haven't. So. As as a writer and as a creative mind, that tells me that you live in the presence of now. Well, maybe that's maybe actors tend to do that. 
don't you think? I think so. Yeah, me too. It's, I, they, it's, it's like that. Was was there a voice that, because in radio, I always said that, you know, oh, I'm going to be that radio guy. But as, as I aged in the industry, I realized, wait a second, I'm a writer first. I'm the writer and the radio guy just happens to be the voice of the writer. What about you as an actress? Is, is that just one of your voices? Um... It certainly has been the major one. Uh, I've written some. I've, I mean, always, even as a kid. Um, but it, but it's never the thing that became uh, that became number one. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. But it's it's a it's terror. It's it's very satisfying and very hard. Uh, I, I wrote a play once as a, as a grown up, and uh, I think it may have been the hardest thing I ever did. Yeah. In, you know, creatively. <laughs> Yeah. Isn't it's also is, is exciting? It, isn't that because the perfectionist always wants to come out inside the writer's writing instrument? I mean, is, is that perfectionist is like a little monster to so many of us? <laughs> well, it's it's also uh, it just keeps building, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we do we get to see you in any more live stage performances, or how how is everything growing this moment forward? Well, I I. I don't know what's next, which makes me sad because I love working. And I recently did a little uh, episodic television, and I recently worked at the O'Neill Center working on uh, developing a new play, which is something which is great fun. And uh, uh, the first time I ever was at the O'Neill Playwrights Conference, which is this place of developing new plays, I think it started in the 60s, the 1960s. The first time I was ever there as an actor to work on developing new plays was in 1968, and the new voices that year included John Guare and Lanford Wilson. Wow. So, yeah, I've been around for a while. <laughs> Isn't that but fun? The, it, it is fun, and, and to me, it's part of, of, of the journey and the story. That's like, I, I'm with uh, future broadcasters all the time at different universities, and they all think they're stars now, and I look at them, I go, slow down, slow down. There, there, there's a lot you're going to learn here. Just don't rush it. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. Did you ever find yourself in a situation where somebody said, man, Lois, this, this is a great day, but, you man, enjoy the ride. Just take it all in. You know, I'm sure that I must have gotten such advice. I don't remember a, a particular moment. Although, you know, when I, I, I went to um, the University of Washington many years ago uh, for a couple of years and they they at that moment had a really remarkable drama dra- drama department and I when I left there and went to New York to become an actress I, this was in Seattle where I was living um, the the main teacher there a wonderful acting teacher named uh, Donald Harrington long and no longer with us for a long time but I remember him saying, uh, just wishing me well and saying, if, if it happens quickly, keep your feet on the ground. <laughs> and that, I've always remembered that as a wise thing to say to a young person. One one of the things that I've noticed about creative people, actors as as well as uh, people that the, the writers and stuff like that, is that th- there's a true art to listening, and and from that listening, your characters are given air to breathe, basically. This is definitely true. Listening is so important when playing when when playing a character as an actor. I think very important. Did you have to do any studying for a lot of roles? Even even with the role with Mac and Rita, did you have to do any studying of who you're going to be? Or did you know just by looking at those lines, it's like, yep, I know who I am. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't that kind of a, of a venture of, of, of research. Uh, uh, it, was, it was there, you know, it was there in the text, and that was that. And, and they, the, the, the characters were not... Um, it's not as though they were historical figures. Right. They were very much of the moment and very much what I think each of us uh, ha- had, in, had in our portfolio already, you know, because it was very, uh, very current. 
you you speak of uh, uh, growing up in Seattle. I'm from Billings, Montana, so Seattle was our playground. That whole entire Pacific Northwest area up there is just just a great stage for just exploring. Yes, truly. Did you, you do you still see Mount Rainier? I mean, there, I mean, there's nothing like seeing Mount Rainier from every corner of that state and just being inspired by the <laughs> presence of that mountain. When, when my family moved there when I was about ten years old. And the first house that we lived in, it was in Capitol Hill, and you walk out on the front porch, and there was Mount Rainier. Jeez. It was extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. It's there's just we we tried to uh, climb it, and we got we the day we were supposed to climb it, we we got a whiteout, and so we couldn't go anywhere. But so I just sat out there with my with my writing, and I just wrote in the right whiteout, and I, and I remember writing about I couldn't even see the page I was writing on. Oh my goodness, that's exciting! <laughs> <laughs> but but those wow. mount, those mountains out there in the Pacific Northwest speak in such a language. Did did you find that maybe that's where your energy came from to be on stage? Oh, who knows? I mean, um, I I think I had the bug since I was a little girl. I was born in Kansas, but uh, <laughs> it, it's really in Seattle that I began to, you know, to proceed with it and to refine it and to grow with it yes oh my god you, you I t- never thought about it being the mountains but maybe you're right I, I i just had a vision of fisherman's wharf down there getting some fresh clam chowder on a cold day in seattle <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, my God. Well, congratulations on Mac and Rita. I can't wait to talk with you many more times in the future. It has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Will you be brilliant today, okay? And you too. Thank you. Be well.